All right. All right. Okay. Uh, there we go. Hi, guys. Hey. Welcome to the Wolf Den podcast. There it is on the screen. That's it. That's the name. Hi. It. Hey, and that's us. We are the Wolf Den There it is. Us, guys. We're here now. Hey. Yay. Uh, hi. How you doing? Welcome. Uh, oh, I don't have my stream labs open. Oh, everything's, uh, uh, there's, everything's all messed up. Yeah, well, how you doing? I'm good. I am actually finally getting over whatever freaking sickness I've had the past Yay. few weeks. But I have something in the back of my throat now that may just make me cough randomly throughout the show. I've been trying to flush it out uh, to the no long, avail. The long COVID. <laughs> it's not that. It's whatever piece of corn chip it's there <laughs> Set up. you've yeah. had a dorito in your throat for the past three weeks yes uh that's uh, the curse of putting doritos in d tier yes uh, that's why we rank them so low yes uh anderson thanks for the 13 months good evening bob and will hello good evening good evening how are you doing uh guys how y'all doing good to see you we're over here doing the podcast time uh today we got a lot of things to talk about what are we talking about today uh today we are talking about uh ubisoft's having a time they might not make it they yeah apparently they're a very big company they are a very big they company. might not they're also a very bad company yes <laughs> so maybe this is not a well, bad so thing. i wanted to take a picture for twitter <laughs> yeah about the like theme of the episode yeah uh, usually I'll take a picture of something. I was looking around. I don't have any Ubisoft stuff. Like I have games. Yeah. But like uh, nothing like iconic. Like, yeah, I don't like, even have the original Assassin's Creed here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, you used to have the Blade. You don't have that here, do you? Yeah. I don't know what yeah. that is. I mean, so because I don't know. They, they, well, I guess we can get into it when we talk about it. But yeah. like, does anybody really care about Ubisoft? Anymore? I've been. I've been. Completely, I know we've actively like avoided that. I, I'm sure people are sick of hearing it, but I. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not into anything you'd be so Yeah, I've, I've come close to like buy, uh, not Assassin's Creed, uh, Far Cry 5 and Watch Dogs 2 when they're on like super duper sale. Because mm -hmm. I've heard those are actually okay. Yeah. But like otherwise, I'm like, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to look at some of their more recent games to see if there's anything that I was actually excited about. But yeah. No, I haven't yeah. been. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're also going to be talking about, uh, <laughs> is it bad to stand your PS5 vertically? That's a surprisingly controversial topic right I now. I saw this, and the first thing that I saw was, yes, it's fine to stand it vertically, but, gotta be honest, I'm one of those guys that thought it might not be safe. Right. And I'm still skeptical. Yes. Well, because I'm... gravity. Yes. We could, yeah, we'll get into that. Also, Pokemon learned some naughty words over on... That was very funny. Over on the Devil's App TikTok. I did see that. Uh, Hopefully we'll get to play it. Stadia is actually doing good, despite the fact it's no longer a thing. Yes, this has been the best closure for an app yes. so far. Or service. Anyway, mm -hmm. Google, NVIDIA, and... Google and NVIDIA voice objections to Microsoft merger. Uh... Also, Apple announces the MacBook Pros with the M2 Pro. Yes. And the M2 Max, Max which I want to talk about. Yes. Because that immediately makes my MacBook obsolete. <laughs> uh, also, more Combat 2 source code was posted. Uh, mm -hmm. Animal Crossing Nuzlocke. Okay. I, and and I, more. I posted that because I knew you were, you you know what a Nuzlocke is. Yes. And you, I thought you'd find that interesting. And you could explain it to me. Okay. <laughs> also, switch sales. I'm going to put that a little higher in, yeah. the, in, the, in the document because that's pretty important. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's talk about Ubisoft. <laughs> yes. Uh, Ubisoft cancels three unannounced games and delays Skull and Bones for the sixth time. Uh, I think somebody tweeted this to us because uh, we said they were going to delay it. <laughs> yeah. And then they, they delayed it. Yeah. Because it, it... It's just perpetually been delayed. Yeah, it seems obvious that they would delay this. Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft has announced that it has, for the sixth time, delayed Skull and Bones as well as canceled three more unannounced games amid major challenges in the industry, the underperformance of Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope, and Just Dance 2023, and an upcoming restructuring. In a press release today, Ubisoft outlined a new strategy for the remainder of its fiscal year as well as lowered expectations for the last fiscal quarter. Ubisoft explains that the move uh, Ubisoft explains the move as the result of the company facing major challenges as the industry continues to shift towards mega brands and long-lasting titles that can reach players across the globe, across platforms and business models. While Ubisoft notes its goals has been to uh, build large overarching global brands the release adds the release adds that games from its investment phase have yet to be released 
while our recent launches have not performed as well as expected. Specifically, the press release later calls out Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope as underperforming in the fiscal in the final weeks of 2022 and early January despite an ambitious marketing plan. Just Dance 2023 underperformed as well. That's in- interesting. Yes. I thought Mario Plus Rabbids did good. Mario Plus Rabbids this one at least got a a, a good critical reception and in some cases people liked it better than the original so it had good word of mouth but it seems to me or it seems likely that that word of mouth was not good enough to reach the sales of even the original all right this is a very controversial hot take <laughs> yes but i've said this before yes i don't think it's a good game right but I think that the only reason the first one did as good as it did and sold as much as it did mm-hmm. was because the dude cried during that press release, <laughs> <laughs> during that press conference where, you know, Miyamoto came out and you know, it was a whole big thing. Yeah. The guy, the game director got re- very emotional yeah. because there he was working with his hero Miyamoto yeah. and it was, it was mm-hmm. all a big moment for him. Yeah. When the game was leaked, like the week or two before that big announcement, yeah. everybody shit all over it because it sounded like the dumbest idea in the world. Yeah. And then that happened, and then everybody's perception changed. Right. So I really do think that that moment changed the perception of Mario Plus. So Rabbids. what you're saying is if they had more people crying for yes. the preview of this one, yes. more people would have bought if it. If they okay. showed the developers being really uh, human and emotional. Well, as we know, so once forth. a Ubisoft franchise becomes an actual franchise, meaning has more than one entry in it, uh, humans are no longer involved in the making <laughs> of it. It's all like just farted out by machines. Yeah. I yeah. heard mixed things about the gameplay because it is a little different. Yeah. Uh Something about like you could freely move around. Yeah. There's, there's not certain yeah, yeah, of, yeah. like steps you can take. Uh, and I heard mixed things. Some people said it was good. Some people said it was bad. Yeah. I don't know. For the most part, the game same. came out and everybody kind of immediately yeah. forgot about it. Also, there was no Mario game on the Switch at the time that this came out. So yes. That also helped yeah. sales a little bit. So I stand by the fact that I don't think Mario plus Rabbids was that good. Mm-hmm. And I think that everybody really just, just kind of they they made it sound a lot better than it actually right. was. You know, it wasn't as good as everybody was saying that it was. Mm-hmm. Everybody was just clouded by either that really emotional moment or the fact that there was no other Mario game on the Switch, yeah. and that's pretty much all that you had. Okay. Uh, in response to these issues, Ubisoft has delayed Skull and Bones for the sixth time and is also <laughs> canceling three unannounced projects on top of the four it had already canceled last year. For Skull and Bones specifically, the new target looks to be early 2023 or 24. Um, assuming this means assuming this means fiscal year, the soonest we'll see Skull and Bones is now April of this year, but it could be as late as December. So, so we we shit on Skull and Bones a lot. Yes, because it well, first off, because it is a spinoff of Assassin's Creed Four Black Flag, and specifically, it's all it's what was pitched as all the boat stuff from Assassin's Creed Four, which. We never liked in, no, in that game. We, we were we, we were, were not fans of the boat stuff. Yeah. Um. In those games, and yes, I say boat stuff. It sounds like butt stuff. It's funny. I'm gonna keep saying <laughs> boat stuff. Um. So you they they decided to make an entire game around the boat stuff in Assassin's Creed Four. Make a new franchise called Skull and Bones. It they previewed it at several E3s. I think we were at one of the E3s. They previewed it at. Like they had a big Skull display. and Bones. Yeah. Oh, they it's had, been it's been a long yeah. time. Yeah. Um, for sure. And they've. Delayed it several times. This is now the sixth time officially that they have delayed it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just still don't know when it's coming out. Uh, the article continues. Ubisoft is also depreciating 500 million euros of research and development on upcoming premium and free to play games and the games they're canceling. And it's looking to both focus on fewer games going forward and potentially restructuring and reducing costs in the coming year. It's reduced its net booking target for the quarter ending in December to 725 euros from its previous target of 830 million euros. Uh, During an emergency investors call, this this news certainly worries some investors who questioned what Ubisoft had who questioned what Ubisoft had remaining in the tank with all of these delays and cancellations. They were reassured that for the next fiscal year, the one that starts in April, Ubisoft had Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Oh God. I forgot to turn that off. Yeah. Lucky. Shut up. Uh, Ubisoft has Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, which was already delayed once. Assassin's Creed Mirage, which was revealed last September. Wait, wait, wait. P- 
Pandora what now? Avatar Frontiers uh, of Pandora. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which okay. was delayed, which was already delayed. Mm-hmm. Um, and they uh, and they missed the movie. So yes. That's, that's kind yes. of a big deal. Um, Assassin's Creed Mirage, which was revealed last September, and other premium unannounced games, including a large one. Oh, and Skull and Bones, if that doesn't get delayed for a seventh time before that. Uh, a side note to this, um, not in the article, but other articles have posted it. One of the on, one of the games that isn't still in development is Beyond Good and Evil 2, even though, like Skull and Bones, that was announced years ago and it has also been perpetually delayed. Yeah. So there is no Assassin's Creed last year. <clears throat> Correct. Yeah, that's uh, that shouldn't be a big deal for a yeah. AAA company like that, but it is because they structure their whole... Uh, finances around yeah these it's big it's yearly their releases. yearly release yeah yeah they that, that they gotta they gotta spread it out a little more they gotta yeah. spread their franchises out you know yeah no. what's a big company like that why wouldn't they alternate well like like assassin's creed far cry well, you know you think about it like they did they like stretched out far cry there have only been i mean aside from like some of the spinoffs like new dawn and primal there have only been six far cry games Ever like Far Cry is not on a yearly release schedule. Well, it's on a there's more. There's a lot of spinoffs there, and DLCs yes, and stuff. But like the main games, the ones that people actually care about, they, like they, they, they're on a shorter development time than they used to be. Like they pump them out more than they used to. But yeah. you know, there's there still aren't as many Far Cries as there are Assassin's Creed. There was like three years in a row where they had Far Cry stuff. Yeah, there was a uh, uh, four, and then they had like the DLC like weird in in between. Four. Or was it Primal? Primal was the in-between. For four? Yeah. So there's four Primal, and then there was five, five. and then uh, there was the one with the two New Dawn, women. which was a spin, which was a spin-off of five. Yeah. 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 So there was at least that year after year after well, year. Primal and New Dawn are use the same maps as four and yeah. five respectively. Yeah. So those are really just like that's what I'm saying though. That counts as a yearly release. Well, well, okay. So Far Cry Four, according to this, came out in 2014, and Primal came out in 2016. Okay, so I skipped a year. Yeah. So like, there's, there's. What I'm trying to say is, there's space in between. But it's not enough because they have to use the same map. It's the same. It's it's the right, well, same game. They're charging sixty dollars. Far Cry Four was twenty fourteen. Far Cry Five was twenty eighteen. So that's four years between mainline Far Cry releases, yeah. mm-hmm. and then between Far Cry Five and Far Cry Six, twenty eighteen to twenty twenty one. Wolf so, Den Dad says, if Ubisoft would have purchased Hims using the Wolf Den discount code, they could have changed their name. Uh, uh, it's Roman, but that, yeah. and the Hims has it too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, no, we're Keeps. We're sponsored by Keeps. Dad, you fucked this whole thing up. <laughs> Roman for the Ubisoft. Yes. But also Keeps. Keeps, keeps yeah, stuff. in case they're going uh, bald. You know, you could do uh, either way. Keeps, no, they got they got that for Keeps, too. Okay. Keeps got that. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, also, um, Blackbird, thanks for the 10 months. Lucky 13. Hey, Wolf Bros. You are both awesome, and I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just trying to say that... Uh, Ubisoft could structure their releases a little. No, bit. No, like I'm not disagreeing with you. I and just they ha, I gotta give them credit. They changed up Assassin's Creed a lot. I haven't yes. played it. It's it, it's not enough to make me want to play. Yes, it, but, but like from what I've seen of like Origins and Valhalla and stuff, it, yeah. it looks substantially different from the ones we were playing. Yeah. Um. It, so, it, it's interesting. Yeah. I did see somebody tweeting about a uh, Unity. Remember okay. Assassin's Creed Unity? Yes. Game looks really good. Even though it's so old. Game looks very nice. Wait. Is Unity the one that like... It's was... one after four, I think. Yeah, that was the one that was... Uh, I think that was the one that was like extremely buggy and everybody hated. So the next one was... Oh, no. There was... Uh, it was the facial animations thing. Yes. There was, there was a, a scene where a person's like head didn't load in correctly. Yeah. And that got memed to hell. And then everybody yes. thought the game was broken. Well, I think the game was broken. <laughs> I don't know if it was actually think, broken or no, if the, it just had no, no. I remember scenes like that. The game was broken. Okay. That screenshot just became like the symbol mm-hmm. for how broken the game was. Okay. Yes, it was Unity was the broken one, and then Syndicate was the one after that that people actually liked. But then it went on hiatus, and then came Origins. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. I got it. I figured it out. But Ubisoft makes a lot of other games. They, they do. You know, just. Yeah, they make Watch Dogs. They ruin Tom Clancy. They <laughs> they got a lot of other games. 
I want to see a list of their releases because I want to see uh, all right what this has twenty twenty to present. I don't know why, but that's all I need anyway. Okay. Uh, while you look at that, mm-hmm. I'm gonna read about how uh, Ubisoft Paris is calling for a strike after bad communication from the uh, CEO Yves Gelmo. I, I want to show you. Look at look at all of their to be announced games. All of these. What is it? Oh, just all of these games that I'm showing you right now. Oh, all those aren't even these. like released or nope. like and don't have a date released? or anything. Okay. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, there's a couple of 2023. One of them is Assassin's Creed for Android and iOS. So I guess the first Assassin's Creed or an Assassin's Creed. I know they announced like a lot of Assassin's Creed games mm-hmm. like a while back. When the they one for Mirage. Oculus is is being developed by Red Storm Entertainment. Oh, they used to do Tom Clancy games. I know. <laughs> Put them back on that. Yeah. Uh, so Ubisoft Paris workers are being called to strike later this month following what's being described as disastrous, uh, ca- catastrophic communication from company CEO Yves Guillermo. Uh, the strike is being called uh, for by Ubisoft Paris section of workers union Solidaris Informatique. Nailed it. Right, okay. uh, which has accused Guillermo of blaming the company's recent downturn in fortunes, resulting in the cancellation of 300 announced projects on its workers. Uh, Ubisoft said it's currently facing major challenges due to an industry shift towards mega brands. It's a situation that reportedly prompted Guillermo to increase pressure on staff, with the CEO apparently sending an internal email earlier this month to let them know that the quote ball is in your co- uh, ball is in your court, unquote, to deliver projects on time and on budget. Uh, today, more than ever, I need your full energy and commitment to ensure we get back on the path to success, he said in an email exchange as seen by Kotaku. The Ubisoft Paris branch of Sole- what I said before claims <laughs> that by asking that by asking staff to be as efficient and lean as possible and give it our all, Guillermo is actually shifting the blame onto them and ultimately advocating for overtime, managerial pressure, and burnout. Uh, Mr. Guillermo uh, asks a lot from his employees, but without any compensation, have salaries kept up with the high inflation of recent years? What about the uh, implementation of a four-day work week what has been what has been put in place for teams that come out uh, of the production exhausted like those of just dance or mario plus rabbits in response to guillermo's comments the union is demanding an immediate 10 percent salary increase for all staff to compensate for inflation with the with the hundreds of millions of euros obtained from tencent there is money in the coffers of the employer notes the group it is also calling, calling for improved working conditions and specifically the implementation of a four-day work week. Transparency on how Ubisoft has been working to evolve its workforce locally and globally, and stronger uh, condemnation of abusive management uh, policies and disguised dismissal that push employees to resign. Uh, because Mr. Gilmo and his clique only understand the, the relationship of power. The union is calling on the employees of Ubisoft Paris to go on strike Friday, uh, January 27th in the afternoon from 2 to 6 p.m. <clears throat> so, basically, he emailed, Yves Gilmo, the CEO of Ubisoft, uh, emailed uh, the worker saying, like, you fixed the company. <laughs> <laughs> this is your fault. And they're happy about it. You know, I've been looking through uh, all of their games that they mm-hmm. released in the past two years yeah um they they honestly don't they haven't made that many games to, yeah. for, for such a big company well what is it what's on there i mean I, i'm looking at it and i haven't played any of these except for tom clancy's uh rainbow six okay. siege yeah which is good like it's good yeah um it's not what i wanted out of a rainbow six uh, but yeah, Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, uh, there's a lot of rabid stuff. Yeah. Also, I played Hyperscape. Uh, that game was not good. It was a, <laughs> it was a battle royale. Yeah. It like could have been good, and it was like a little fun for like two seconds, but it wasn't what they were hoping for. They were hoping to be the next like Fortnite. Or, yeah, yeah. Or uh, PUBG or whatever, but it, it didn't quite work out. Um, Brawlhalla. Forgot they made that. Oh yeah, they did make that. Um. They do have a lot of Just Dance. Just Dance should sell a lot, but they said 2022 did not sell a lot. Correct. That's yeah. 
that's insane because that yeah. should sell. That usually that should sells. be easy. Yeah, they still put that out on the Wii because it sells. Yeah, that should be really easy. Yeah. Uh, actually, <clears throat> this might have been the first one they didn't put on the Wii. True. And that might have been yeah. why it didn't sell. <coughs> uh, Monopoly Madness. Yeah. Oh, they also they also have some things coming out that I think are interesting. They have uh, this game called X Defiant. Did you talk about that? No. So this uh, just is to be announced. Right. Um, it was formerly known as Tom Clancy's X Defiant. Oh. Now it just says X Defiant, a Ubisoft. Uh, what's it say? A Ubisoft original. Okay. An upcoming free-to-play multiplayer competitive first-person shooter, fast-paced arena shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, under development by Ubisoft, the setting of this game revolves around factions called Defiant. There's Wolves, which I think are from Ghost Recon, mm-hmm. Echelon, which are from Splinter Cell, yeah. and Outcasts and Cleaners, which are from The Division. Okay. Defiants are customizable with traits, abilities, uh, devices, weapons, and items. In March 2022, the game was rebranded as a Ubisoft original drop in the Tom Clancy's Universe title and is ex expected to feature characters from other ubisoft franchises okay uh a closet test of a pre-alpha version of x defiant occurred in north america in 2021 it has six versus six linear game modes such as domination and escort oh i thought it was gonna be like a like an mmo or something yeah i'm kind of interested in that having characters okay. from uh ghost recon and splinter cell yeah and i guess the division i didn't mind i liked the, the setting of the division i just didn't yeah. like how it played um so I like this idea, but Ubisoft needs to do, they need to be way different because yeah. all of these games that I'm seeing are copy and paste. Yeah. Previous like, games. It, it sort of became like a, like a running joke, like the Ubisoft style, because they were all big open worlds. We had to climb watchtowers to reveal more of the map. And the map was always littered with like collect-a-thon objectives and, you know, yeah. raid bases and things like that. And there was no variety in any of them. Like they yeah. were all, you can either sneak in or you can blast your way in. All yeah, I played the first Watch Dogs, and then I and then I started playing like the Division, and I was like, I played this already. Yeah, I played Watch Dogs. Yeah, <laughs> I played Watch same. Dogs, and then even when I played as Far Cry Four, not only was it so similar to Far Cry Three, but it was like very similar to Watch Dogs. Yeah. So yeah, so I wasn't interested in that. They do have two games in development, Project Q. And Project U. Project mm-hmm. U only says it's for PC, though. Okay. So I don't know. But both of those, there's zero information. I think them. the most interesting game that they've released in the past like few years was Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. <laughs> but that was an Xbox 360 game, and it was interesting because they finally put it on a modern system. Right. They are rebooting Prince of Persia of the Sands of Time. Well, that's another re- uh, game that's been in development hell that they've had to delay yeah. and cancel like a few times. And Splinter Cell. Yeah. Yeah. So they're trying. They're trying, but they're not doing well. If you know their CEO keeps, you know, telling his employees to make the company better and not actually doing any initiative himself. Their problem is they have five, five Assassin's Creed games in development. Yeah. So I mean th- th- stop wasting your money. I mean th- th- the problem <sighs> is that that's sure fire way to sell games. But, it's but if so, you just take a game and make it really good, it will sell. It, if you, it's take, also if you sure, take a game that you know is going to sell and make it shitty, then your company is going to dissolve. It's also a surefire way to like establish brand burnout. Yeah. You know, you, you release the same game every year yeah. with no variety. You know, people are not going to want to play it. I mean, look at people are excited for Tears of the Kingdom because we don't get a Zelda game every often. Yeah, it's and even, then when we do, it's fucking awesome. And it's even rarer that we get a direct sequel to a yeah. Zelda game. Within a console generation. Yeah. So, you know, take... A, uh, and the games are very good. Yeah. You know, so that's something to look forward to. That's something to learn from. Uh, We have Caleb Fox with seven months. I've been listening to old Wolf Den Live episodes, and I just got to an episode where you all talk about how horrible it would be if the NX has detachable controllers. It's so fun to go back to old rumors. Well, I mean, look, we're not wrong. Those detachable controllers... Are pretty bad. <laughs> they're, point. They're not very comfortable. the The drift issue is like, well. I think the biggest problem that I had at the time was that if you're always if you have a mechanism that you're always moving, like yeah. the hinge on a DS, it's 
gonna break. Yeah. And in this case, it's the rails on the switch. Yeah. To be fair, the rails on the switch, I've never heard of them failing. Yeah. And they're pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, it's the thumbstick that's the problem. Yeah. And that isn't really because it's detachable. That's just because they made shitty thumbstick. Yeah. So that was an oopsie. <laughs> uh all right so yeah ubisoft uh they need a massive restructuring I, something they need to give other people some of these ips and and let them get get do fun you with think it. do you think maybe microsoft is buying the wrong company microsoft could do a lot of good with ubisoft yeah for sure i think yeah. i yeah because honestly like even sony would because i know anybody because here's the thing like, they just need new leadership i there's a like i know like Everyone's still like on Activision's case for all like the sexual harassment and workplace like abuse. Didn't that Ubisoft have that? Ubisoft case? had like just as bad, if not worse. Yeah. But like people forget about that because for whatever reason, like people just that just gets shut out of people's memory. And I think because Activision is a bigger company, so it's it's better when the bigger companies like fall and stuff. But you know, Ubisoft, you know, they they've shipped abusers to other uh to other like places in the world, like they shipped them to Ubisoft Shanghai, <laughs> who I think is making Skull and Bones, by the way. That's you know. So, so they found out that these people were abusers, and they were just like, "All right, we're just gonna we're, we're gonna we're move gonna... you to another country." Oh god. Yeah. No, it's like it's not great, and you know the fact that like Yves Guillermo is like part of the Guillermo family who started Ubisoft, so it's still technically a family-run operation, which I think is part of the problem. You know, you have the, like this one group that's like really holding on to their legacy for dear life. It's kind of like not to get into it, but it's kind of like what's happening with WWE right now. <laughs> oh like God. to just to just to give you the Cliff Notes version of it, they ousted Vince McMahon somehow, and somehow he found his way to he found a way to weasel himself back to be executive of the board and has controlling voting shares. <laughs> Because he, well, first off, he is a lunatic. Second off, that's his legacy. That's so his is company. he? Was it a rumor that he's selling it to the Saudis, or was that is that a real thing? So, so, part of the condition of his return was he would not. He had. He's always had majority vote shares, um, and he would not approve any sale of the company unless he was put back in charge as executive. So they put him back in charge as executive. And so sales talks began immediately. One of the people interested in selling and buying WWE were the Saudis. So he's not selling to the Saudis. They're just high on the list. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. But now it looks like he's not. It's, that was actually all a ruse. He's trying to actually just get his company back. Oh, God. I know Succession is not based on the McMahon family, but I can't <laughs> watch Succession without thinking of the McMahon family. Oh, you know what we don't have here? Speaking of TV shows, we're done with Ubisoft, yes. right? That's the end. Yeah, well, that's the shitty company might be facing a reckoning. I feel really bad for the employees of this massive worldwide conglomerate, but um, yes, go on strike. Send the message to these French lunatics that like your company sucks. Have you seen The Last of Us show? I have not. I've heard it's very good. Okay, though. I thought we were gonna talk about that for a second. No. I'm an. I got. It's an hour and a half. The first episode. Okay. So I got an hour in. It is very good. Yes. It's very different, but it's one of those things where like you know it's gonna happen because you've played it already. Yeah. But you don't know how it's gonna happen or when it's gonna happen. Right. And they do a really good job of kind of playing around with your expectations. Yeah. So I did read somewhere. Pedro Pascal said um, his version of Joel. Is not as sneaky and like as the stealthy as the one in the game, mm -hmm. uh, and he said because fifty-five-year-old men can't crouch for a very long time in real mm -hmm. life. That makes sense. So um, I accept that. I haven't really gotten to. I'm I'm an hour in. And yeah. There's been action, but I haven't seen like Joel at his jolliest yet. I yeah. feel like it's. I'm at a point where it's coming. So, yeah. Uh, um, I don't know. Yet. I'll, I'll probably give it a watch. I'm kind of like. I don't know. I don't know what the right word is. I'm kind of like sick of like the whole like prestigeness of the last of the last of us is getting mm -hmm. like the idea that I mean, look, the last of us part one, at least has an excellent story. It is one of the best stories in the told in video games, mm -hmm. but it's this, this idea that like 
video game stories have never been good until The Last of Us. And now that it's getting a television show, you can actually see how good The Last of Us is because television is a better medium than video games. <laughs> that's no. like that's like the vibe I've kind of been getting from it. Well, that's I know that was that's probably, what it seems like the producer or the people who are making the show. It seemed like yeah. they thought that. It seems like they thought they that's their mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is fucked up. Yeah, that, that like bothers me a yeah. lot when like it happens like with comic book movies too when like Hollywood comes in and basically says we can do this better because we're Hollywood yeah. we do everything better the way I am thinking about it is that uh, it's it's an incredible story mm -hmm. that is uh, locked behind the medium of video games mm -hmm. and I think for a lot of good reasons but there's people who are never going to get to experience it because they just don't want to play video games right. uh, and now this is opening it up to a wider audience yeah that's the way and i think that's a net positive no matter what so yeah i'm i like it I, okay. I, I, I'm, yeah i'm into the idea of it yeah i'm sure like if i actually do see it i, I can i would get behind it because i have heard good things about it i think yeah. the only criticism i've heard is that um you can't play it yeah <laughs> it they get the vibe down pretty good yeah uh, they changed some stuff that I think is fine. Like I, I it doesn't seem to matter. Yeah. Um, they pretty much paint Joel as like they do a good job of like giving you hints of like Joel being a piece of shit right from the beginning. Okay. So it's pretty that, which is a little different than the video games. Yeah. The video games. It's like a gradual descent. Yeah. You kind of shit. start where you're like, but I that might be different for us because I already know that he's a huge piece of shit. Yeah. But like. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't think that way. You got to have somebody who's never experienced The Last of Us watch yeah. it and see if they think that he's a shitty guy. I'm I'm convinced my in laws are going to watch the show because they watch everything, and I'm going to have a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> I heard somewhere that is the highest rated show on Rotten Tomatoes ever. Really? Yeah, I don't know how true. That I've is. heard it, it was like the second best, um, second most watched HBO debut of the last decade. Oh my god, which was incredible. It has a 99 wow. on Rotten Tomatoes. And the audience score is 96. It is very good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't watch a lot of TV, so yeah. I don't really have much to compare it to. The other show that I watch is The Mandalorian. It's the same it's guy. Same. Honestly, same story. Yeah. So. It's good. I'll finish it later. Okay. Uh, how was it? Once a week? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll watch it. It's, I'll, it's, it's been fine so far. No, I'll, I'll get to it. It does not need to be an hour and a half. No, they could have. Uh, well, they could have. That was probably, a lot. probably the first episode. They want it to be an hour and a half. Yeah. So I'm watching, and I'm like, all right, that wasn't necessary. I didn't yeah. need that. And it's like all setting. It's all yeah, just setting the, the 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 mood. I am watching Wednesday on Netflix. That's a fun show. Mm -hmm. Do you like do you like the Adams Family? Yeah, it looked interesting. Yes. I saw it's, the. It's uh, a good time. It's a little. It's a little weird, even for Adams Family. They do some things I don't necessarily like that they do, but I'm mm -hmm. having a good time with it. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I still haven't gotten past Andor. I got like six episodes in. He's in jail. He's and in jail. Then, oh. And then, uh, I, once he got in jail, I stopped watching. Okay, because that's actually when it actually gets. Good. I know. I get. I'm having the same issue that I have with anime, where there'll be a season of anime, mm -hmm. and they'll build the whole thing up. They'll have like a goal, and they'll build the whole thing up to the goal. Yeah. And then in an American show, usually they come into all of these like conflicts that change how they need to get to the goal and, and the goal gets yeah. obscured and then finally at the end of the season they get to the goal or whatever or there's a big twist or whatever in anime they'll have a goal and then in three episodes they do the goal <laughs> and then there's just it seems like yeah. it's wrapped up and there's nothing else you need to do until unless you keep watching yeah. so with andor the whole goal they did it and now it's like we're in a new arc yeah i could just leave here <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you see Peacemaker? No, Peacemaker. Is that's good. good. You should watch that because that that's like not as many episodes, and like they don't they don't get to the goal until the last episode. Good. So that's that that's how it should be. Yeah. Damn it. Anyway, let's talk about whether or not I'm ruining my PlayStation <laughs> Five. A few weeks ago, reports began circulating that PS Five owners who had their console in a vertical position were at risk of damaging the device. The claim made by hardware repair shop owner 68 Logic um, via Wululu, <laughs> which yeah. has since updated its article, descri described the liquid metal used to cool the APU as being the culprit 
as the shop has encountered cases where the substance had spilled out of its container and had begun spreading around the PS5 motherboard. In an update from Wululu on Twitter. That is how you say it. Yes. The site added that while the problem this problem can occur, there is no evidence that it will happen to PS5 consoles that are fresh out of the box and haven't been opened. If your PS5 has been operating normally since you acquired it and hasn't had its shell cracked open uh, for a fix, then there is no danger in leaving it in the vertical position if you have the space to do so. If you have, if you have to have it fixed, re, if you have have it fixed, if you had had it, fixed. if you had had it fixed recently, you might want to exercise some caution in how you position it. Uh, I I remember this being an issue with the Xbox 360s. If you had them vertical, the heat sink would slowly droop off to the side, and then your CPU would not be hot anymore. See, I remember this being an issue with the PS2, which was the first console, first major console to allow you to stand it vertically. But the issue there was the original tray that they, the original disc tray that they had um, wouldn't keep the cartridge in place properly. Like when you, when it slid back in. So like the grabber, would like shake it around and it would yeah. actually scratch the disc on the tray itself. And that scared me away from using from having anything vertical. Yeah, ever. like I didn't I didn't start putting my consoles vertical until last year. Yeah, because I found it to be more uh, space efficient. Well, yeah, setup now. This generation, my consoles are vertical because yeah. PS Five is too goddamn big. Yeah, and the Xbox just works. It's best. designed to be vertical. Well, actually, to be fair, they were horizontal in my apartment, and that's where I use them the most now. I haven't used them once. Yeah. Since since moving. I haven't used them. They're vertical, but yeah, they're yeah. just show pieces right now. Um I'm still skeptical. I I think for best health, uh ver, uh horizontal yeah. is the way to play them. Yeah. I mean I, it sounds like this isn't really an issue unless you have to like crack open your PlayStation 5 for like a repair. And you're like breaking the seal. Yeah. Uh chances are you don't have to do that. Um, if you need to have your PS5 repaired, send it to Sony yeah. so that you know you're getting a good repair job. Otherwise, you run the risk of there being damage to your system. Yeah. Um, otherwise, like if you stand, it sounds to me like if you stand your PS5 vertical, keep it vertical. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried. Yeah. Um, I'm sure everything's fine. Uh, Wooloo also says on Twitter, here goes nothing. There was a critical misunderstanding on our end when we thought the coder said the liquid metal problem ha- happened on unopened inbox PS5s. Oh, that's what you already said all that, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, well, the, uh, to summarize, they, they had originally written that this was happening in PS5s right. people recently had bought. They what tweeted, it, there's no evidence that it happens on consoles that have been sitting in their box. Yeah. Uh, that part was a complete <clears throat> misunderstanding. Uh, okay, I'm I'm still I like like if you're paranoid. Uh, yeah. I I, I I like for longevity. I I still think that yeah. vertical is is not as healthy as horizontal. But I don't think you have to worry either way. Yeah. Also, who's playing with discs anymore anyway? You know. You'd be surprised, because because that's the thing. Your your the heat sink is a potential problem, but also the disc is a potential problem. Yeah, because the disc it's spinning like this. Well, I mean, now gravity is an issue. Nowadays, I mean, now we have like better grabbers in there yeah. for the disc, but nowadays, like it really only has to spin like on boot up because everything's on the that's hard true. drive. That's a good point. Everything's on the hard drive <laughs> or like downloaded from online, so yeah. it's really just a you know what you call it. Uh, f- no, nah, not not DLC. Um, Insta- security Insta- check. Insta- security installation. check. Yeah, it, it's an installer. The, yeah. the the Call of Duty disc is literally an installer. It's yeah. like forty megabytes. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna keep mine vertical. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's talk about Pokemon. Say fuck. They say the fuck word. This was crazy. <laughs> I loved this. The Pokemon company is usually very careful on uh, with how their brand is used. Very rarely do we see missteps where something showcases the franchise in anything other than a family friendly. Let's light. just play it. Let's okay. Play it. Let's do it. Uh, I'm gonna 
do this. All right. That's crazy. That is it, crazy. It's Pikachu. <laughs> this is the Pokemon Center. Uh, one of the. Po it looks like one of the Pokemon Centers. There's a guy dressed up as Lucario <laughs> in the middle, and then there's a guy dressed up as Pikachu walks over and claps his hands. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's now it's off of TikTok, so you can't find it there, but you can obviously find it on Twitter. Yeah. That uh, is insane that that was the official yes. Japanese uh, Pokemon account. They don't know what curse words are. They don't no. know there's certain words that you just can't say, you nope. know? So they just they just let it ride. And then, of course, obviously, they, they deleted it. Uh, the Pokemon company is usually very careful with their brand and how it's used. V very rarely do we see a misstep where something showcases the franchise in anything other than a family-friendly light. But the official Pokemon TikTok account in Japan certainly made quite the goof in one of their latest videos. Mm -hmm. You can certainly call it a goof. It's been removed from TikTok, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, that was that. Uh, I I I loved that. Yeah, I didn't uh, like it though. I'm gonna like it right now. It, I mean, that's, that's that a should good be time. A yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, so that I guess I guess that's the whole story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Basically, I put in this article uh pretty late. Uh huh. Uh, but I thought it was worth talking about. Uh, you know the Me You Mini, that little tiny Game Boy thing that I have. Yes. They're making a Me You Big. Okay. Well, uh, me you medium it says. Oh. Uh, well, the rumors are true. There's a me, me medium sized me you mini plus coming. Uh this is interesting because it looks exactly the same as the me you it looks exactly the same as the RG this one, the Ambernick yeah. RG three five XX, which I still have in the box. That might be next week's video. I don't know. Um all right, people, this is not a drill. It's an official Miu Mini Plus. It, it's common. Yes, it would seem the, that Miu has heard some of our prayers, who, and decided <laughs> to make a Miu Medium. Uh, I like to call it the Miu Big. I'm thrilled because my feeling, what this is from Retro Dodo. My feeling was that the Miu Mini was just too small for my own personal use. All right. See, but that's my favorite. Oh, like, my hands are big and it's not very comfortable to play the Miu yeah. Mini, but it is super portable. It's easier like, to take with you then, yeah. And the, what makes it so good is that that it's the one that I want to take with me. Yeah. It's the one that I have on me. And that's why it is so good. So even though it's not as comfortable, it's still the best one that I have because I will take it with me mm -hmm. rather than not if it's uncomfortable to have. I know some of my colleagues were not bothered by the size. Uh, heck, Retro Dodo gave it the number one spot on our list of Betch Retro handhelds at the end of 2022. So did I. So clearly we loved the Miu Mini, even at that size. And most loved that it was so pocketable. That's one of the main selling points. But again, I'm just glad we now we will now be getting a bigger brother option in the new Miu Mini Plus. I want to know why. Like, what is... Oh, there's an update. Interestingly, it would seem that the that Miu are openly answering people's questions on the AliExpress account regarding the new Miu Plus. So people have been taking advantage of that open dialogue. Miu has confirmed that the Mini Plus is coming February 10th. It will be the same international configuration as the Miu Mini, but with the addition of Wi-Fi, that's good. The price would only be about five dollars more than the original. That's mm. crazy. And they plan to start sales with 500 transparent black units. Only Ooh. 500 on the first day. That is insane. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming it's going to have the exact same internals, which is a little disappointing. It's literally the same device. Just a bigger. Just bigger. Yeah. We can safely assume that this will have the same quite similar, that this will have something quite similar to the original Miu Mini inside. Mm-hmm. They are not worried about squeezing more power out of the Miu Mini Plus because it still has the same button configuration made for 8 to 32 bit era gaming. No extra power needed there. And here's, I don't know if I showed this before, but here's the comparison between the Mini, the Mini Plus, and the Anbernic RG350XX. I think they're making this because they saw people were really interested in the RG350XX. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, I'm sure also too, like people just want a bigger system for their bigger hands. Yeah, I mean, still though, look at the bottom, like the chin. There's like no chin. Yeah, and like that's I don't, I don't think this is going to be very comfortable to hold. I regardless. think the RG Thrive Three Five XX. I don't think we need this. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little salty with Anbernick because their last thing that I tried wasn't that good. Yeah, but um, people like the, this this new one, the the Miu Mini ripoff. Yeah, so. I don't see if they're gonna make the mini plus. They should have made it a little more powerful. So yeah. sell it for a little more money. I, I, I don't. I don't really see the need for. Also, they have a terrible time fulfilling me. You mini. Uh, uh, they can't keep them in stock. Yeah. So just fucking work on that. You know, this really doesn't make yeah. much sense to me. Um, I mean, I think it, you know, definitely people definitely seem to like the Game Boy style. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's my layout, favorite, as opposed to like the. The Game Boy Advance, like the wide style, which is my favorite. So yeah. I, I'm just sick of these companies releasing things so quickly. I, I would rather that well, yeah, work on something as an upgrade or completely different than yeah, no, the, the same thing in a different form. The, factor. These guys like are are absolutely fucking ridiculous in how yeah. fast they. It's it's the extreme of that joke. You know, don't get an iPhone because they just release another one in like next month. Yeah, we, no, they this this is, is literally that. This is the worst part. The worst offender of that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about Stadia. Yes. Uh, the, the Stadia. The, the best <laughs> platform closure that has ever happened. Yes. It is amazing how, like, good they've been mm -hmm. with regards to, like, shutting down and, like, taking care of their customers. Yeah. Uh, including what they're doing with the controller. Google is launching its final Stadia game, uh, today. Weird. And it's promising... <laughs> <clears throat> and is promising to release a tool next week to enable Bluetooth connection on a Stadia controller. The last Stadia game uh, to launch on the service is Worm Game, a test game that Worm was game. technically available on Stadia before launch. Um, developers at Google have decided to release the game just before the streaming service disappears next week. Uh, Worm Game is a humble title we use to test many of Stadia's features starting well before our 2019 public launch. It's right fucking through snake. 2022. It's fucking it's snake. snake. Yeah. Um, alongside the new games, uh, Google is also uh, committing to enabling Bluetooth on the Stadia controllers. Google Stadia owners will be able to will be pleased to hear that there's a self service tool coming next week um, that will enable Bluetooth on the Stadia controller. Uh, Google originally launched the Stadia controller as a device that connects directly to Stadia devices, Stadia services, and had Bluetooth chip disabled. After news broke that Stadia was shutting down. Fans have been finding ways to save the controller from e-waste fate by using workarounds to connect it wirelessly to other devices. Workarounds like connecting to an Android device will no longer work, will no longer be required thanks to this new tool. It means that for most Stadia players that purchase a Founder or Premier Edition will have uh, will have effectively been gifted a free Bluetooth controller thanks to Google's refunds. Um, that option to activate the Bluetooth mode went live today. So wait, I'm confused. Why was the Bluetooth disabled in the first place? I well, I don't know. I know the way it worked. The Stadia controller worked was through Wi-Fi. So wait, Google originally launched the Stadia controller as a device that connects directly to Stadia services and had the Bluetooth chip disabled. Yes. Okay, so the it had Bluetooth, but you just couldn't use it. You couldn't use it. So why was it there at all? I that's a good question. Maybe they knew this day was coming, or maybe, maybe they were looking. For because the thing with Stadia mm -hmm. was that it was intended to be the one gaming platform that you can play on any, every device. Okay. But by the end of its life cycle, you can really only play it on like four devices, like Chromebooks, Chromecasts, yeah. uh, sele select Android phones, not even all Android phones, and like maybe the Chrome browser on your computer if you're lucky. And all of that was done through Wi-Fi. I guess if they wanted to do it in like TVs or uh, have like your a computer. dedicated uh, your computer, like through a dedicated app and not yeah. just through Chrome, the Chrome browser, like then Bluetooth would be. Yeah. Or if you only have a wired connection, and you don't have Wi-Fi. Yeah. You were about to say the whole big thing with the Stadia controller was that it connected directly to your Wi-Fi, not to the device you were playing yes. it on. Yes. So Stadia was streaming. So it was already connected to your Wi-Fi. 
So you're, mm -hmm. what you're watching, if you're playing on the computer, I'm watching my Wi-Fi stream. Yes. But my controller is not connected to the computer. It's connected to the router. Mm -hmm. So it's it's it doesn't have to go through the computer. It's going straight to the internet yeah. to, to, to lower latency. People in the chat are saying, uh, like Skycast says, future proofing. That could be it too. That could be it too. But, I mean, that's part of what you're saying too. Yeah. Is that, like, uh, they had a lot of features that were planned that never happened. Yes, and that must have been one of them. Yes, um, and you can activate the Bluetooth mode in your Stadia controller as of today. Um, which means you can connect it to PCs, Macs, phones, and presumably other devices. It's not an automatic change. It's a manual process that uh, can't be reversed. What's oh. more, you only have until December 31st, 2023 to do the switch to enable Bluetooth wireless. After that date, any unconverted Stadia controllers will still work via wired USB gamepad. Um, but it'll be locked out of playing games wirelessly. Uh, that's just stupid. Yeah, I don't understand why there's a time frame on this. I also don't understand why Wi-Fi mode gets disabled then. Yeah, that's really strange. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's not usable. Like, you wouldn't be able to go back, back and forth. But, like, maybe down the road there's another service that can use Wi-Fi. You're not using the controller anymore, Google. Yeah, it, it, it's very strange. Yeah, I mean, it was designed very strangely that it didn't even use Bluetooth at all. It had Bluetooth, yeah. but didn't use it. So there must be something weird with the Bluetooth. Like yeah, the, it like interferes with yeah something. There that could also be a reason why they disabled it because it could have been weird. Yeah. It could have interfered with the, with the Wi-Fi. But I don't know, because like this has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and this is no problem. Yeah, that's a whole-ass computer, you know? I mean, most things, like the freaking uh, Xbox controller has Bluetooth and whatever the proprietary yeah. Microsoft thing is. So, you could do it, yeah. but they just must have not done it correctly. I, I will say, this is an awesome controller. It is a very good controller. Yeah. Um, I did the conversion earlier today. Oh. And I used it. I tested it out on Open EMU, and it works very well. Um, on your Mac? Yeah, on my Mac. It works very well. It controls very well. It feels good in your hands. I hadn't didn't try it with, like, the analog sticks on 3D games, but I played it like, like Genesis games, mm -hmm. and it works very well. Okay. Um, I would recommend, if you have a Stadia controller, definitely do this. It's very easy. Just you, uh, make sure it's a Chrome browser. Just Google, Google it. It'll, it'll surely be the first result. <laughs> Um, I didn't do this. Um, make sure your controller is charged uh, because it has to have at least 10% battery life in order to do it. And it's definitely dead. Yes, it's definitely Here's dead. It's definitely dead. So, uh, it takes about half an hour to get to 10%. So charge it before you do this. Um, once you do do it, do do, uh, -huh. um, yeah, just follow the instructions on screen and you have yourself a pretty good controller on your hands. I might do this because... Uh, what do you mean might? What else are you going to do with it? <laughs> no, I'm definitely going to do it. But I might uh, leave this in the arcade cabinet that, that I have. I might, there you go. I might put it on the side of that. Yeah. Why not? This might become my permanent like PC controller then. Yeah. Because it's like, what else am I going to use it for? Well, you, don't you have 14 Xbox controllers? I do. I also have... Those are good PC I also have, controllers. I also have two 8-bit do controllers. Yeah. So. We got a lot of controllers. We got too many controllers. Got I, gotta many find, I want to get like brackets to hang my controllers on the wall of my base because I think a to look good and be like and just grab them yeah like, having, having a little wall of controllers yeah. isn't a bit that'd be kind of cool right that'd be kind of cool to yeah. have. i was gonna lay out all of my nintendo switch controllers for tiktok it's not gonna happen i have <laughs> way too many you might have to wait till the summer when you can like do it outside <laughs> i have the room it's just i gotta let it's gonna be it's, it's like work yeah. it's a lot of work yeah anyway uh, so yeah, public service announcement. If you got a free Stadia controller, remember yeah. it was free. Yeah, you can now use it with your uh, you know, with that. You can now use it on anything else. Yeah, I wonder if you can connect it to a Switch now that's in Bluetooth mode. No, it would have to. You would need an adapter of some sort. Even though it's Bluetooth. Yeah, the, the Switch doesn't just use any Bluetooth controller. Huh. It's probably X input, if I had to guess. I guess. So you're basically only going to be using it on PC unless you have an adapter of some mm -hmm. sort. There's a potential for some homebrew stuff. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if they left it open a yeah. little bit for people to mess around with. I should note, um, one of the weird quirks of it, yeah, so it has a headphone jack at the bottom. That headphone jack only works now through wired mode. 
Yeah. It but won't work the, through wireless. That is the same with the Switch um, and Xbox, too. Like, 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 well, the Xbox controller. Yeah. Uh, I think if you Bluetooth it to a computer, I don't know if the headphone jack works. No, I haven't tried it. Yeah, I'm not. I know sure. on PlayStation, that's Bluetooth as well. That'll that'll work. The PlayStation controller does. Other third party controllers don't. Oh. Yeah. So like, I had the uh, I had a scuff that was like yeah it wasn't one of their modern ones it was made for the playstation 4 yeah and you needed to have it wired in order to use the voice Interesting. yeah um thrill house says ikea pegboard works great for controllers might have it's a good idea yeah that's a good idea because i was just gonna go on amazon type uh controller wall mount things and just buy those <laughs> uh okay let's talk about switch sales Switch was the United States' leading console last year in terms of unit sales, according to market research firm and Long Island's own NPD Group. Oh, I didn't tell you this. No, I, I, yeah. I, I, I think we've talked about we'll it from yeah. Long Island. I just frequently forget. I know, right? Uh, announcing both December and full year sales today uh, data on Tuesday, NPD says Nintendo's console sold greater number of units than Sony's across both time periods, but that more. But that the more expensive PlayStation 5 led hardware dollar sales for the month uh, and 2022 as a whole. New entries on December software sales chart, uh, which was led by Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, included Need for Speed Unbound at number 8, and Crisis Core Final Fantasy 7 Reunion at number 10, and Callisto Protocol at number 17. As recently reported, Modern Warfare 2 was 2022's best-selling game, ahead of Elden Ring, Madden 23, God of War Ragnarok, and Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Overall consumer spending on game hardware, content, and accessories in December hit $7.6 billion, an increase of 2% compared to 2021, with hardware sales up 16%, offsetting a 1% drop in content sales and a 2% fall in accessory sales. December's figures took an overall consumer spending on hardware, content, and accessories in 2022 uh, to $56.6 billion, which, had, which was down 5% compared to a year earlier. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I was under the impression they were doing worse this year, um, or this past year. 1% mm -hmm. drop in content sales is not a lot. That's no. not a big drop at all. No, it is not. Because I thought things were slowing down for the Switch. Yeah, no. I think they're just like releases are slowing down. Releases because, are slowing down. Because they don't need to release anything. Yeah. Because look at the numbers. It's yeah. Like they're, like, they're doing good people anyway. People are wondering why like they haven't like hinted at a Switch 2. Like this is why. Yeah, they're they're, they're still the best selling video game console year over year. Yeah. I just saw somewhere like they're the Switch is officially the best-selling console in France ever, mm -hmm. like of all time. I think officially it's the third or fourth best-selling video game system in history. Yeah. So, like, they're not in a rush. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> their content slowed down because people are still buying the old stuff. Yeah. And, and, and they don't need to spend money on making new stuff because they're already selling old stuff. So yeah. um, I think that will eventually slow down even more. Uh, so they will have to start pumping some stuff out and making new, new hardware and whatever. But uh, right now they're doing, they seem to be yeah. doing just fine. Hardware sales up 16%. That's crazy. Yeah. For I mean, such I think, an old console. I think Nintendo like understands that like it's aging yeah and like they're look they're definitely working on like the next switch if the rumors about the switch pro or whatever or the 4k switch are true then they definitely have something in the pipeline you know maybe they abandon that to just go straight to the, the successor to the switch at this point yeah i think that the switch pro was uh that's definitely not happening yeah i think that that was an idea and then that got kind of just mm -hmm. thrown away and it turned into the oled whatever yeah whatever happened I I, th I think that there was uh, they didn't have a lot of parts w whatever parts they wanted to put in they couldn't figure it out yeah and then they had to charge more for the OLED I bet they didn't want to do that but they had yeah. to because uh, <coughs> yeah, there there was a shortage at the time of, yeah. of all of the parts um 
I just saw this on Twitter. Uh, Chad Staleski, known for directing the John Wick movies, will direct Michael B. Jordan in the Tom Clancy sequel, Rainbow Six, as a follow-up to Without Remorse. Oh, yes. I saw that. that. So uh, Without Remorse, if I remember correctly, was is a... It's Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. And it's a movie, it's an Amazon movie uh, starring Michael B. Jordan. I don't remember what the reception to that was, but it looks to me like the sequel to that will just be Rainbow Six. That's crazy. <laughs> yes. I forgot who Michael B. Jordan plays in that movie. I don't think he plays anybody on Rainbow Six. Weird. Yeah. So why is he in it? Well... Uh, Rainbow Six is like part of a the Tom Clancy's novels are like a shared universe yeah so like uh, Ding Chavez is in all Ding Chavez, right? yeah Ding Chavez is in, is in uh, the Rainbow Six games but Ding Chavez is also in um, two Jack Ryan movies from the 90s Clear and Present Danger and the one before that with Harrison Ford so like his characters like appear in and out yeah so maybe Michael B. Jordan's character John Kelly is is going to be in Rainbow Six. So according to the Hollywood Reporter, Jordan will reprise the role of Navy SEAL and CIA operative John Clark, who has appeared in numerous Tom Clancy novels, first in the Jack Ryan series, then in wait, his wait. own spinoffs, like wait, wait. Without Remorse. Back up, back up. Oh. Michael B. Jordan's John Clark? John Clark. Oh, okay. Navy SEAL I'm, and CIA I'm operative thinking, I'm thinking Clark. of Jim Ryan, uh, Jack Ryan, who is... He, he was yeah. in Jack Ryan. Yes, Jack Ryan... Is who Jim from The Office is playing on yes. Amazon? Yes. John Clark. John Clark is Rainbow. Is Rainbow? Ra- yeah. Rainbow. 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 Is it? I No. I'm trying to remember the mythology of Rainbow Six. The leader of Rainbow Six mm. is either named Rainbow or Six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Team Rainbow is the squad that actually okay. goes out. Well, he, John Clark first appeared in the Jack Ryan series, then in his own spinoffs like Without Remorse and Rainbow Six. Yes. Uh, the movie will adapt from the same novels that Ubisoft has based its video game series on. In an interview with IGN, Jordan s- described... I forgot these were novels. I was like... <laughs> I was like, oh, look, Ubisoft is going to have a movie. That's a big yeah. deal. But no, Ubisoft has nothing to do with this. Yes. <laughs> The movie will adapt the same novels that Ubisoft has based its video game series on. In an interview with IGN, Jordan describes Without Remorse as a more personal story, but a sequel could be more action-packed and skew closer to the same material covered in the video games. Stileski has directed each John Wick movie since the film series began in 2014 and has become one of the best action directors in Hollywood. Yeah, I'd assume that this is probably going to be action packed if he's directing it because wasn't he an action director? He was a stuntman. He was Keanu Reeves' stuntman. I thought he was a stunt coordinator or something. I mean, usually stuntmen do also do stunt coordination and stuff. But yeah, he was Keanu Reeves' like personal stunt guy. And he's like, yo, I got got a script for a movie. You want to be in it? And Keanu's like, yeah. Without Remorse was an origin story for Jordan's portrayal of Clark and was released on Amazon during the pandemic. However, Paramount is said to be releasing Rainbow Six in theaters. Oh. (coughs) Without Remorse has a 45 approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Interesting. All right. That was a weird wacky. Yeah. Why do all these characters have two first names? Says Matt (laughs) Sessions. Well, it's like how every Marvel <laughs> character's name this is, is alliterative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Anyway, let's talk. Let's talk about the MacBook. The, the MacBook. Talk about MacBook let's next? talk about the MacBook. Okay. Let's get that out of the way. Okay. Because I want to talk about this. Okay. Because I, really, I want to learn about it. Apple announces MacBook Pros. This happened today with M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. Yes. Higher end M2 chips are here, headed first for the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. So basically this thing, what I have in my lap, yeah. is getting a, 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 a one up chip. Yes. The chip is getting yes. one up. Um, and they didn't like have like their usual like two hour Mac event. Yeah, it's weird. They'd had like a 20 minute like truncated version of it. I didn't even see it. I, 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 I saw it. it. It's literally just like they did 
they did their entire BS in 20 minutes. <laughs> you mean they could have done that this whole time? Yes. I also and they didn't even like hype it up. There was no announcement. It's just they just dropped it. They didn't even show the video in the press release. That they made a release on their own little blog, and they didn't have the video in it. No, and they didn't have the prices in that either. They did. I didn't see it in the video. They in did. the video, but yeah. not in the press not in the release. Blog. I didn't see it. No. Uh, I didn't even think they announced the prices because of that, but uh, they're here. Mm -hmm. Apple has announced a new M14, uh, new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros featuring its latest M2 Pro and Max chips. The M, when did the last, when did this one come out? 21? No. Yes. 21. No, I'm 2021. Pretty sure. Okay. I don't know. The M2 Pro model will launch with a 12 core CPU up to 19 core GPU, holy shit, and up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory, while the M2 Max includes up to 38 cores of a GPU power and support up to 96 gigabytes of unified memory. 96 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah. That's fucked up. <laughs> I have 32 in here. The new 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro starts at $2,000. That's not bad. Yeah. With the 16-inch model starting at $2,500. That's not bad either. Both are available to order online today and will start shipping and appearing in Apple stores on January 24th. So the one that I have in my lap... 20, yeah, 2021. Damn. So the one that I have in my lap right here is the 2021 one, I yeah. guess. Um maxed out except for these 64 gigabytes of unified memory i only got 32. Mm -hmm. so and also i got probably the baseline hard drive because i always use externals i don't yeah, really yeah. care so uh that's where i was at so uh this would be a huge upgrade i think this would probably be the equivalent of getting 64 gigabytes of this new one yes um anyway uh, it'll be in stores on January 24th. That's next week. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. I think you can pre-order now. My God. Apple says the M2 Pro has double the amount of transistors the M2 shipped with and nearly 20% more than the M1 Pro. It also features 200 gigabytes a second of unified memory bandwidth. Twice what's available on the regular M2. On the regular M2? On the regular M2. The M2 MacBook. Oh, regular. Yeah. The regular M2. All of this... I'm thinking of M.2. Yeah. <laughs> All of this power should result in better performance in apps like Adobe Photoshop and Xcode. How about Premiere? Huh? <laughs> Apple claims the MacBook Pro with M2 Pro is able to process images in Adobe Photoshop up to 40% faster than with M1 Pro and as much as 80% faster than MacBook Pro with Intel Core i9 processor. Damn. The M2 Max chip has the same 12 core CPU as the M2 Pro, but much like the M1 Max, I'm saying a lot of numbers yeah. here and, and, and letters. It really pushes the GPU power more. Apple claims the M2 Max is up to 30% faster than the M1 Max in graphics and can apparently tackle graphics intensive pro projects that competing systems can't even run. I'd like to see what they're talking about there. Apple also once again claiming that the 16-inch model offers the longest battery life ever in a Mac, getting up to 22 hours of video playback or 15 hours of wireless web browsing when equipped with an M2 Pro. How is it 22 hours of video and f but only 15 hours of web browsing? It's probably they're probably um it seems like it should be the other way around. I think they mean like if you're using like QuickTime or like Apple TV or whatever cuz they they do that. Like if you're using like the built-in Apple software then it'll uh, process it better and more efficiently mm -hmm. than like if you're doing it like if you're using VLC or a, another Well, the 15 hours of wireless web browsing sounds to me like you're watching a video wirelessly not yeah. just sitting in chrome like that shouldn't waste more memory than watching a video locally well it well you'd be surprised because chrome is a resource hog yeah like sure. beyond belief well when they say wireless web browsing they're definitely talking about safari yeah and i think googling or looking through emails yeah should not be more battery life than fucking watching Spider-Man on your on uh, well, full I screen mean, in 4K. You really, know? Who's gonna be 
web browsing for 15 hours straight. <laughs> like That's every day. This is me every day. Um, both estimates are hour long, are an hour longer than the previous M1 Pro. I will say this freaking MacBook, I never charged this thing. Really? I, I, I mean, I put it on the charger like, you know, like at night or when I'm using it, you know, at my desk or yeah. whatever. But I move it around all day sometimes. See, I, mean, like, I never think about charging. I am afraid to like keep this off of the charger at this yeah. point. Like at my old one, I was. Yeah. My old one only had like one or two. And I want to keep. Left. I want to keep this. You know, I was. I definitely want to get a new MacBook, but I still want to keep this as like a backup, mm -hmm. and like give it to my wife. So I got to like replace the battery in it, yeah. which is like two hundred dollars at Apple. So that's a lot. Well, I would replace it myself, but I've seen the iFixit video. It requires a lot of patience that I don't have. Yes, sometimes it's worth the two hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, we were skeptical of that claim at the time because of the company's very particular battery life tests, and then we actually used it and got sixteen hours. Uh, Apple's promising that the 14 inch model will also get an extra hour of battery life compared to the previous version up to 18 hours of video and 12 hours of browsing. That's not as long as its estimates for the 13 inch pro with the regular M2. Yeah. The M2 just has an insane battery life. Yeah. Uh, the latest MacBook pro models also now include Wi-Fi 6E and a more advanced HDMI. And then they have in parentheses, probably HDMI 2.1. Thank God. Yeah. That supports 8K displays up to 60 hertz and 4K up to 240 hertz. That's definitely HDMI 2.1. Yeah. I was disappointed that this thing doesn't have HDMI It was surprising. I think, like, you know, at the time, they probably realized, they probably theorized, like, it's not as widespread yeah. as, you know, they thought it was. And now that, you know, two years later, more people are getting HDMI 2.1 devices, so time to upgrade. Yeah, it, remember... The previous MacBook Pro only had USB-C ports, remember? Yeah. So the fact that this had an HDMI at all was a huge deal. Yeah. And then we got it and it, and also this thing's capable of like a lot of video bandwidth. Yeah. And it's only 2.1, uh, 2.0, that's yeah. it. Like that's annoying. Uh, but I plug everything in through USB-C and I'm able to get from one USB-C port, I have two 4K 60 hertz monitors. Yeah. And I think one of them's a uh, variable, so. Anyway, Apple didn't hold a press release for a press event for these new MacBook M2 Pros and Max models, but the company did publish a 19-minute YouTube video that's particularly that's practically the same thing. While the video doesn't feature Apple CEO Tim Cook, it's filmed at the Apple Park headquarters and featured several Apple engineers. You can see the entire announcement, which includes the new M2 Mac Mini in the video below. I forgot about the Mac Mini. Yeah. Um, what they don't tell you about the Mac mini is that they also announced a version of the Mac mini with the M2 pro chip in it. Wait, Max, you mean? No, pro. Yeah, no, that's that, that, yeah, no, I remember they, they released that, they released the M2 pro. No, 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 I'm talking about the Mac mini. Okay. So the Mac, so the original Mac mini was just an M1 chip. Oh, I, different, I understand. different configurations, and now they they announced the M2 Mac Minis, but also you can get it with an M2 Pro chip. Yeah, that's a so big you deal. can take the Mac Mini and step it up a little bit with yeah. the Pro chip if you want to do some more advanced work. And that's crazy. That because, is crazy. Uh, I mean, people like using Macs as like a little workhorse, yeah. uh, and uh, it's a little cheaper to not get the whole laptop. Yeah. But that's interesting because now they have. The Mac Studio, yeah, which had a, a Mac that has a Max chip and an Ultra chip in it, depending on the configuration you get. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially a mini, but a little big. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, it, it looks like two minis on top yeah. of each other. So I guess you know this is their way of like giving uh, consumers like a step towards like the studio. Like if you want to have a desktop, they have a step to the studio. But like if you're not ready yet, you can still get yeah. like good performance out of it the thing is i mean apple's really good at giving you uh uh i saw mkbhd talking about this they mm -hmm. give you like a laddered system where it's like oh if i get the regular i i kind of just want a mac uh i, I want a mac mini mm -hmm. you go you look at the mac mini and then you're like oh i could get the 500 gigabytes of memory or whatever but if i spend just 100 dollars more i can get the m1 pro chip yeah but then if i do that and i spend 100 dollars more than that I can just get the Mac Studio. But then, if I spend $100 more than that, 
I can just get a MacBook that has a screen. Yeah. And then that's how they get you. You keep like amping yeah. it up and up. But I do think it's kind of worth it to not get a uh, a mini. I mean, I mean, get whatever you yeah, what, whatever you want to get. But uh, the a MacBook has one of the best screens you can get in any for any device. Yeah, this is the one of the best screens you could have. So not having that in a Mac mini, if you can spend a couple dollars more, it's worth it. Well, if you the, were to just buy a display like this from Apple, it would be a thousand dollars. The Mac mini starts at $600. Like that's that true. alone, that is that alone, shit. like is enticing. Yeah. And like, if you have them, like you, if you have a, a shitty monitor, yeah, you can focus on getting a good computer and then, upgrade your monitor later yeah you know and you don't have to get an apple monitor you can get an lg monitor yeah yeah, yeah. i think when i was looking at getting this they had the i think the the first ones to get the m1 chip were the 13 inch and and, yes. the, and the mac minis um and i was looking into that and i was like i don't want because that was with i wouldn't have gotten a regular m1 i would have yeah. wanted one for editing and at that point i was like i'm getting the same thing just without a screen so that kind of yeah. sucks um but yeah for six hundred dollars that's yeah. insane to get that you yeah. use a shitty screen who cares yeah um all right whatever <laughs> uh any notifications oh we got seesaw with 27 months oh, thank hello. you very much why don't you talk about Google and NVIDIA? Okay. Uh, while I go pee, I got to pee. Okay. Like crazy. Hold on, let me look it up because it's a Bloomberg article, which means I had to open up in incognito mode in order to read it because it thinks I'm, I'm not subscribed to Bloomberg. I'm good. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm Bob. I'm good. I got <laughs> it. You, you can have my back. No, I'm fine. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Alphabet Inc.'s Google and NVIDIA Corp. have expressed concerns to the Federal Trade Commission about Microsoft Corp's acquisition of Bl of activision blizzard inc adding fuel to the government's case against the 69 billion dollar deal nice according to people familiar with the matter the companies joined sony group uh in raising issues with the transaction which the ftc sued to block back in december uh, the commission has argued that the deal would hinder competition in the video game industry and has scheduled an in-house trial for august Either company could be called to testify as part of the FTC trial. Google and NVIDIA provided information that backs a key FTC contention that Microsoft could gain an unfair advantage in the market for cloud subscription and mobile gaming, according to the people who asked not to be identified because the process is confidential. In his remarks to the FTC, NVIDIA stressed that the need for equal and, and open access to game titles but didn't directly oppose the acquisition, according to one of the people. Microsoft first announced the Activision deal almost a year ago, uh, f but regulators fear that Microsoft could make it harder for rival platforms to get unfettered, uh, unfettered access to Activision's most popular titles. Shares of Activision dipped uh, to session lows after Bloomberg reported the news. The stock is currently sitting at $76, uh, well below the $95 share suggested, blah, 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 blah. Uh, NVIDIA and Google are both major forces in the industry. NVIDIA leads the market for graphics cards prized by gamers and operates a streaming service called GeForce Now. Google competes with Microsoft in cloud computing services and offers an unsuccessful uh, gaming service called Stadia that is shutting down this Damn. month. Uh, Google's Android mobile operating system is also its central... It's also uh, central to how millions of people play video games. Uh, Sony, whose PlayStation console competes with Microsoft's Xbox, has previously argued that it sees the Act Activision deal as anti-competitive. Uh, Microsoft said it's open to addressing concerns about the deal. It reached a 10-year it reached a 10-year pact to bring Activision's Call of Duty to Nintendo's gaming platforms and agreed to release future versions on Valve's uh, Steam platform at the same time as they're released on Xbox. Um, so basically, Google and NVIDIA are joining Sony in their um, bid to try and stop this merger from happening. Yeah, as a business, <laughs> it would it would uh, <clears throat> benefit them to make a big stink about it. Well, here's, here's the thing. I understand why NVIDIA opposes this. Um, because they, they do fear, they could fear that not releasing it on, not releasing Call of Duty on PC 
um, could hamper the sales of NVIDIA graphics cards. But people why, why people would, would buy people who only play Call of Duty on PC won't go update their graphics card to the next NVIDIA. But, but why wouldn't they sell it on PC? That's so stupid. I know. I know. If but anything, also, it would be better. But also, NVIDIA does have their own cloud service, GeForce Now, and Microsoft's not going to want to put it on that. They're going to want to put it on xCloud. Now, that is that true. Is, yeah. That is a good point. Google, I have no idea why they're involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're shutting down Stadia. They're getting out of the games market. This does not affect them in any way. <laughs> it, it only affects them in that... Uh, Microsoft and Google are both some of the biggest tech companies on the planet. It affects them. A and Microsoft will only grow bigger by doing this merger. The way, like, according to the article, like, it affects them because, like, you know, Microsoft and Google are both, like, competing in this, the cloud streaming uh, space. But, like... That's the argument. I don't think that's yeah. the reason they're involved. In but, this. like, why Like why would Google... Get, like, they're, it's not the same thing. Google has proven that they can stream games over cloud. Microsoft has proven they can stream games over cloud. That's it. You're still competing with each other. There's still competition in that space. Taking Call of Duty away from Google is not going to change that. It's, I honestly think it's just because Microsoft is one of the biggest tech companies in the world, and so is Google. And yeah. Microsoft absorbing another big company is a problem for it, for Google because they're just two giant tech companies. Okay. So then why doesn't uh, Google go out and buy Nest and ruin their <laughs> whole app ecosystem? Oh, wait, they already did. Why do I have to change the temperature every two hours when I'm away so that Zim doesn't freeze to death? Because it thinks I'm gone, so it lo it drops the temperature. It just turns the fucking heater yeah. off. Yeah. Zim shivers at room temperature. He shivers. You know what I hate most about nest products now because like i i got like nest products before like google transitioned everything over so i have like two thermostats and the protect their smoke alarm mm -hmm. the thermostat i didn't know they had a smoke alarm. yeah That's it's actually a very good smoke alarm the thermostats transferred over to google home the smoke alarm does not so if i need to like deactivate it if it goes off while i'm cooking i have to go into the nest app that's annoying yeah I, the nest app is fucking annoying yeah because, I can, again, I can't make it so that it won't automatically lower the temperature when I leave. And I think I need the Nest app in order to do that. But because I already set it up through Google Home, I don't think it works with Nest. It should. Like, I don't think it does a, a, a dual. It should. I don't know. I don't know. Either way. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, I saw this quote in particular in this article. Uh, Microsoft spokesperson David Cuddy says, we want people to have more access to games, not less. And I actually believe him. I think that Microsoft, I mean, they want more of a hold on all of these I IPs. And stuff, yeah. But they like, they want control over it. But I do think Microsoft owning these Activision IPs will put them in more hands, not less hands. Because I, I think Microsoft is really good at putting their IPs in more people's hands. They're putting their they're making good at games putting, more accessible. They're putting their they're good at putting their IPs in more people's eyes, you know, because they're getting they're getting their games out there on PC and on Xbox and on streaming. You know, they they've made it clear that they've been the the more successful of like the streaming services for games. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. I mean. Look, as much as we like trying to make fun of Sony for like keeping going after Microsoft solely because of Call of Duty and nothing else, like they have a leg to stand on. Like taking like Microsoft buying the, this company and like potentially taking away all of these games and all of these sales from Sony, that's a problem. That is a danger. Um and to an extent, Nvidia does have you know a foot in that fear as well you know because it's the same it's the same thing um my big question is like i i, I just i don't understand why google is involved yeah, in no. this because like but, you don't see other tech companies like that are not gaming centric yeah getting worked up about this but nvidia should have a good relationship with microsoft because of the graphics cards yeah you know so like it's weird that they'd want to sully that relationship yeah like how much of a market share is geforce now you know, like it should like, I don't, are they really doing that well with G4s now? I mean, it's been around for a very long time, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, you know, the people who use it enjoy it. 
you know, I know in, NVIDIA is more of like a graphics card maker than anything else. But even still, like, you know, there, there is a potential for Microsoft to take some of these games off of PC yeah. and make them Xbox console exclusive. And they're going to want to come in and, like, make sure that doesn't happen. I don't know. <clears throat> I, it's a strange thing to be rooting for a big, massive corporation. <laughs> like, I, I truly think that uh, my life will be a little easier if Microsoft gets gets this uh, right. uh, merger. But at the same time, does the biggest, you know, temp company in the world need to become bigger? I don't right, know about no. that. Anyway, uh, Mortal Kombat 2 source code. Yes, it was leaked, and then Warner Brothers said, get over here. <laughs> that was bad. I'm going to do that again. Give it back to me. That's, what, uh, that's the, the source, line The from source the code leaked, Kombat. and then Warner Brothers said, get over here. That's bad. They said, give it to me here, that's guy. That was, that's, I that like mine that. was good. Mine was good. Okay, classic video game classic Mortal Scorpion Kombat line. has Give won the here. hearts and minds of multiple gaming generations over the 30 years, developed by Midway, the second release of the fighting game, uh, made its debut back in 1993. We were there for that because we were old. We were. Somehow our <laughs> parents were cool with us getting I that. know, right? Back then, that was the big controversy. Yeah. And they're like, whatever. It's video games. Video games are for kids. Yeah. Um, the releases were big hits for the American game developer Midway, but couldn't prevent the company from going under. After several financial setbacks, Midway eventually filed for bankruptcy with Warner Brothers picking up the assets. Um these assets include Mortal Kombat source code and all the copyrights that came with it. Those rights were taken over by the newly for, uh, founded Warner Brothers subsidiary NetherRealm Studios, which continues to release Mortal Kombat to this day. Uh, Warner Brothers and NetherRealm are not solely focused on new content. They are very protective of the historical rights as well. Um, that became apparent over the past few days after the 1993 source code for Mortal Kombat 2 leaked online. The leak was met with excitement by gaming history fans who discovered unused artwork and an early and an early or alternate storyline. Um, the files in question were uh, posted to a GitHub repository by the user account Historical Source, which has leaked many other game assets in the past. Uh, while many of those remain online, Warner Brothers was quick to object. A Warner Brothers Discovery employee sent a DMCA notice to GitHub asking the developer to pr uh, developer platform to remove the leaked files posted by a historical source. Specifically, the notice claims that the files infringe on intellectual property rights of the Mortal Kombat series of video games and all names, characters, logos, and original source code. The request was successful. People who try to access the repository today will see a message from GitHub explaining that the files were removed in response to a DMCA takedown notice. The swift removal of the the swift removal was a disappointment to classic game fans who were eager to browse through the historical artifacts. That said, Warner Brothers does own the rights, so ultimately it gets to decide what happens to the content. Historical source uh, must be quite displeased as well. While we haven't seen a public response to the DMCA notice, a new repository that was published by the same user shortly after the takedown is quite telling. The repository, titled not MK2, but instead... <laughs> Uh, but instead of reposting the leak, it simply contains a copy of a Wikipedia entry discussing complaints of gender discrimination and toxic workplace at NetherRealm. These complaints first emerged three years ago following the release of Mortal Kombat 11. Oh, my God. Yeah. So take that. <laughs> so, I mean, it, they are they did put up a whole game for free they, they put up know? the source code i mean you can't really unless you know how to like work you with compile source code. It. you compile it yeah but like unless you know how to do that it's just like text and like artwork still it's it's <coughs> it's theft okay it's theft like you i'm trying to see where you could purchase the game that's that's what's gonna be my, my counterpoint yeah Warner Brothers like may own Mortal Kombat, mm -hmm. but they do, and they may own like Midway, like the whole Midway catalog. They do not give a shit about the Midway catalog or the old Mortal Kombat games. NetherRealm has been trying to put out like new versions or like remasters or compilations or whatever the original Mortal Kombat trilogy mm -hmm. for years, and the closest they ever got was a shitty HD port on 360 and PS3. Warner Brothers does not care about the back catalog and Midway titles in particular um, and like Mortal Kombat specifically. They just want the new Mortal Kombat. They just want NetherRealm to make a new Mortal Kombat game and a new 
uh, Injustice game because th- uh, like most game companies, they don't think people care about the old stuff. They just want new stuff. So, yes, I love that one. That's a good one. <laughs> it's just a gif um, of uh, so, Sub-Zero. Unless you still have... And, and I don't hand. think you could play the HD collection on Xbox One through backwards compatibility. So so unless you still have those hooked up, like you can't play... You cannot play Mortal Kombat 2 unless you have an older system. Or you buy it on PC. Or you buy what it I'm PC. looking at it right now. Oh, it's available it, on it, PC? It's available on PC. You can buy it on... Okay. You buy the collection with its with the K collection. Yeah. Buy it on Steam. Actually, wait. No, this is Steam Community. Oh, because it was available on Steam, but it's probably not anymore. Possible. I saw it on Amazon. It was available on Amazon. Okay. Uh, Mortal Kombat Collection. It is not on Steam. There you go. So why is it on Amazon? Uh, That's a good question. (laughs) Weird. So yeah, only Mortal Kombat 11 and there's a billion... Mortal Kombat 11. Oh, yeah. 11. And 10. And that's it. Yeah. Wow. They really don't give a fuck. They don't. So. All right, never mind. Steal it then. Yeah. Uh, all right. Animal Crossing Nuzlocke. Explain to me. Well, first of all, remind me again what a Nuzlocke is. All right. So in Pokemon. Yes. A Nuzlocke is when you. Oh, now I'm starting to understand what an Animal Crossing Nuzlocke is. (laughs) A a Pokemon Nuzlocke (coughs) is when you need to get one Pokemon from each area. And it's permadeath. So if a Pokemon dies, it dies forever. Okay. And you need to remove it from your party. Okay. Um, so it makes the game really, really hard. Yes. And you only get to capture one Pokemon in each area. So you mm-hmm. don't get to like farm Pokemon and and so that if it dies, it dies. Yeah. You can only get one in each area. Got it. Uh, on January 4th, YouTuber and Nintendo Talk released a challenge to their viewers to make Animal Crossing New Horizons fun again by introducing what they call uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons hard mode. Hashtag ACHN hard mode. Uh, having sold upwards of 40 million uh, units since launching in 2020 and literally making history books regarding the social impact during the height of COVID-19, the fact that Nintendo appears to have ceased support for this title um, is baffling. Uh, and frankly, fans will not stand for it, uh, which is why this mode was created. Here are the rules uh, from Nintendo Talk. Uh, this is a new twist on the game that calls for veteran players and new players alike to restart their islands and test their skills by following a strict set of guidelines intended to revive the joy of Animal Crossing. Can, can I read the, the rules yes. here? Restarting rules. You can have up to one re-roll on island layouts. Island name must come from Animal Crossing island name generator. Uh, starting villagers pick their house spot. Uh, villager rule. This is where I think the Nuzlocke comes from. Yeah. Villager rules. You must keep at least one starting villager until you get their photo. If you choose to re-roll, you must get both villager photos before they can leave. All villagers with thought bubbles must be talked to. <laughs> you may only gift one villager per day. If someone asks to leave, you must let them go. Oh my god. Starting villager rules still apply. I mean, how how could you keep a villager that doesn't want to be there? Uh, If you get a campsite villager, you must invite them to your island. Starting villager rules still apply. The max number of tickets you can use for hunts is 10. If you get to the 10th ticket, you must take that villager or autofill. I've I've been playing the Nuzlocke, it sounds like. (laughs) You may only go to one mystery island per day except on hunts. No amiibo scan scenario items cannot be sold. Uh, There's other rules. Yeah. But that... There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of rules. Yeah. It's a little too complicated. I thought maybe it was like... Uh, how regular Nuzlocke is, you can only get one Pokemon and uh, like per area, and if they die, they die, and you gotta let yeah. them go. In this, instead of if they die, they die, it's if they want to leave, you must let them leave. Yeah. And also, that it seems like there's a limiting factor of how many villagers you can like accept in your island. Yeah. Um, too many rules. Uh, Nintendo Talk says that's the kind of beauty of this mode. It is to go back to when we first started. I want to start from scratch and really take our time, I guess, with Animal Crossing. 
Uh, the most unique challenges come from the design rules where players are only allowed to wear and use their own designs or those obtained from another player's able sister shop and their outfits must change weekly. The hope is that this socially focused challenge will add a unique spin to each individual and their island and also make share, make sharing and playing together even more interesting. It sounds like this guy just wanted to play Animal Crossing again yeah. and uh, didn't have a good reason. So they made a good reason. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's always something to do Like when you replay a game, like set new challenges for yourself, yeah. you know? Like how I played uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Land uh, as a one-hit kill permadeath. Yes. Well, not permadeath, but one-hit kill. Yeah. And that, that, that made the game fun. Uh, we got notifications from Mostly Green with 33 months. Bob, it's been a while, but I remember you were trying to get in shape. How's that going? Oh, God. No. <laughs> not good. Went right out the window. Uh, that was a long time ago. Uh, 360 degrees of Asmania. Tasmania with 12 months. Thanks for all the advice and videos for the Steam Deck as I love it. Oh, you got one coming out Thursday, buddy. I know you didn't think it would happen, but I think it's my Switch killer. I agree with you. Will Is Will doing the correct to the Nintendo podcast segment anymore? The corrections. You haven't in a while. I haven't. It's just because I haven't had time to like sit down and like because watch i've all. been perfect every <laughs> yeah time. yeah let's I go will. with that <coughs> uh leonard ford thank you for the 12 months it takes you know it takes a lot of attention to just sit there with a pen and paper and like <laughs> wait for him to make a mistake um okay and we have one more article here all right i forgot what it was uh suicide squad uh oh, has yes. battle pass yeah for some reason a leaked suicide squad image has confirmed uh plans for the service uh, sorry, a leaked Suicide Squad image has confirmed plans for service game elements such as a battle pass. <clears throat> the image originated on the 4chan forum and has been verified by a VGC source is understood to originate from a recent test build and shows various menus planned for the Rocksteady co-op game. The battle pass and multiplayer currencies shown in the image have inspired debate on social media about how extensive the live service elements will be for the title. However, a development source told uh, VGC that while Battle Pass is planned for the game, it will focus on cosmetics such as skins. Uh, in addition, the various currencies shown at the top of the leaked image are understood to be XP used to power up and customize the skill tree of each anti-hero, effectively making them unique to the player. You don't start off debuffed and weak, VGC was told. You start off great and get ridiculous like Arkham Knight's Batman. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. The next game from the creators of the Batman Arkham series is built as a genre-bending action-adventure shooter set in an open-world metropolis. Play playable solo or with up to four players in, in online co-op, its original story follows Suicide Squad members Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, and King Shark, who are on a mission to save Earth and will kill the world's greatest DC superheroes, the Justice League. I'm kind of not interested in games where you grind currencies or points or whatever and yeah. use them to unlock different moves and 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 and, and you you like build your character that way. I'm more interested in when you get an item that gives you a new game mechanic. Yeah. Or you build your like loadout and that helps with the mechanics of the I'm game. okay with like games that you know you build up you know XP and then you can spend that XP on different moves and stuff. You know like you know I get like I just forget the moves. <laughs> just it yeah. becomes too many moves yeah and i don't know which I, I, one i should I, I get did. but like i understand that mentality at least because like you're building towards something mm -hmm. you know you earn enough to like learn something new like that's fairly rewarding to do i i don't like when it becomes a number fest where there's all these different numbers i have to memorize and like this number is different from this number in order to increase this number you need something yeah. different than this number um which look, which looking at this screenshot, that's exactly what it's telling me. I don't like the fact. I mean, I understand you can customize. Put him away, put him away, put him away. <laughs> Oops. <coughs> well, okay. <laughs> Oops. 
I was getting bored of this topic. So okay. I said, no, I'm kidding. I tried to, I tried to show the screenshot. I hit the, yeah. I hit the wrong button. I understand like the ability to customize each character individually, but at the same time, a game like this, if it's going to be, if you're going to play it solo, um, which I think a lot of people would want to, um, you're, you're going to want like, an easy way to like keep everybody consistent. And if mm -hmm. like, if it's going to be one of those games where like all every number matters and every number has to be managed individually, that's not going to be fun. It's become a spreadsheet. Yeah. So <sighs> do you jump between these four characters on the fly? Like, like in Gotham Knights? You can't jump between them on the fly. You have to like, you do a mission, like you can select them from the Belfry. Okay. Yeah. It's not, it's not like, you know, or like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. It's not like Grand Theft Auto. Okay. That's annoying. So Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can swap between them on the fly or if like you pick one for a mission. Yeah, I'm not interested in this game. <laughs> I wish I was. I'm a little interested because Kevin Conroy's in Yes, it. and I'm going to definitely be crying like an asshole yeah. during this game. I, I wish I was interested in it, but it looks so much like Sunset Overdrive, and I did not like that game. <laughs> I just am burning out on these types of games. Yeah. I don't know. And it sucks. Although I have been playing, believe it or not, I'm playing Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, yeah? It's pretty good on Steam. Yeah. I mean, because that... That's like a well-designed game in a classical style because it's not trying to force bullshit on you. Yeah. This looks like it's trying to force bullshit on you. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, yeah, now it's time. <laughs> <laughs> now, this one's very important. This says they should do a bit on Velma where she gets progressively more pregnant as the season goes on. Then in the finale, she gives birth and it's Scooby and all the characters look shocked and it says to be continued, but then there's no more episodes and it's <laughs> never explained again. Uh, I have heard nothing good about this show. No. Also, apparently that's not Shaggy. It is. It is. He's going by his uh, legal name. Shaggy Shaggy is not his birth name. Oh, that makes sense because that's a weird name. Yeah. His his uh, his name that was given to him by his mother and father, it, it, this is in classic Scooby-Doo canon, is Norval Rogers. Okay. <laughs> People call him Shaggy because look at him. <laughs> yeah. So what's his... Uh... So in, in Velma, he goes by Norval. Norval. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is Shaggy's origin it's velma's origin story that also happens to have shaggy and fred and daphne in it okay so also i mean i've only seen the trailer yeah and he says that he doesn't like like drugs or something yeah so maybe this will ha be how he how he gets, gets to enjoy drugs yeah maybe and that would at least be interesting <laughs> yeah so yeah i've heard nothing good about this yeah one. so that. I've, I've been seeing people post clips from the last Scooby show that had like a, the art style was almost like Family Guy. Yeah. But uh, it had some uh, adult themed jokes. Oh, yes. I, they, they think that was the show where they, where they made, where they finally just said, yeah, Velma's a lesbian. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. one people liked. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. it was an actual Scooby Doo show. I heard that I heard good things about that. This one, it's like they want to do something weird and new and different, but you, there's no dog. So well, all right, here, well here, I mean, here, <laughs> here, he is. here he is. He's right there. He's been here the whole time. Right. The, there's no dog. Strike one. You know. Uh, Hopefully, the dog is acquired throughout this. I don't know. I feel like it's not going to be. My the point I'm trying to get at is, like, I understand changing certain things, mm -hmm. but you you can only change so much. And then you reach a point where it's not the thing anymore. Yeah. You know, like at a certain point, like they just started removing every fucking thing that makes it Scooby-Doo and it, it, it's not Scooby-Doo anymore. Well, it's not. It's Velma. It's Velma. But even then, like this, uh, this is not the same Velma as like class, like classic Velma. Right. I saw, I saw something where like in Velma, there's a part where the classic Scooby-Doo bit is Velma loses her glasses and she spends five minutes trying to find him because she's blind as a bat. Yeah. And in this... It's like she, you killed Kenny. Yeah. In this, she loses her glasses and she just picks them back up and starts yelling at Fred. <laughs> well, that's like, dumb. Why Why even put that in there? It was a little nod. It was dumb nod. Yeah. I'm that's never, a bad nod. I'm never going to watch this. I'm yeah. Just, I got other things. Yeah. I got other things. You to got do with my 30 life. minutes left of The Last of Us. 30 pilot. minutes of The Last of Us that I'll put off for another week. Yeah. 
Anyway, now we'll talk to you people real quick. All right. Starting over with people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast on our YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Uh, at Trey was the first one. I was listening to the podcast episode in the car on my way home from work when I heard the game noises coming from the handheld that Will was playing on. I thought my car was making those noises. <laughs> they were just faint enough to, to where I couldn't tell if it was the podcast or my car. Scared the bejesus out of me. Well, he gave a warning. He was trying. Yeah. With it. I was listening. I was watching something today on, on my computer and I there was a loud bang in the video, but I thought it was in IRL. So like I paused it and like looked around the house and then like I sat back down, I put my headphones back on and then I hit rewind five seconds and played the video again. And the bang was in the video. Oh my God. <clears throat> so glad I wasted my t- life. <laughs> Caleb Fox says, Bob, I noticed Mega Man and bass, uh, b- bass, Mega Man and bass. Mm-hmm. Mega Man and Base Pro Shop. In the B-roll of your DS macro video, is this a good Mega Man game to start with? I'm going to say it's not that good of a game, period. Right. I've only played the first level. Yeah. Don't like it. Uh, I have tried playing it as a kid, but for some reason it never clicked with me, and I'm not sure if it was my fault or the game's fault. I'll tell you right now, the screen's too small, characters are too big. It's weird. Mega Man and Bass. Mega Man and Base. Sorry. Um, Mega Man and Base um, on the GBA is like a port of like a much older game that came out on the Super Famicom that never came to America. Uh. So I think the reason why it's weird on the GBA screen is because it was meant for a TV screen and then was not ported correctly. Well, it feels like the Game Boy versions of the Mega Man games with it, where Mega Man is huge. Yeah. And uh, it feels weird. And the same thing with... Uh, the Game Boy versions of the original Mario, the Super Mario Deluxe. Yeah, it's too small and yeah. it just doesn't. But but it's a the problem is it's a GBA game. Yeah, and Mega Man Zero feels great. Well, Mega Man Zero was designed for the GBA. Yeah, yeah. so it's just the right size. They should just made them the right size. Yeah. Anyway, he says I had tried it as a kid, but for some reason never. Oh, I read that already. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I I haven't gotten that far in Mega Man and Base, but I don't. I just don't think. I think there's much better Mega Man games out there. Yeah. Stur, Stur Sticks Burke says a lot of this smart tech is starting to look dystopian AF. Oh, that was the yeah. He's talking about CES. We talked about CES stuff. Yeah, I mean, eventually, when it takes all your data and it shoots it up to the satellites, and then it accidentally launches nuclear weapons at everybody, and yeah, it's gonna. I'm ready for that. Yeah. Just take me, uh, Sir Newt Muscat says, "Hey Bob, I know I'm a bit late to the game, but I discovered your channel through a YouTube video you did on the Steam Deck. I recently received my own, and I love it. It even I love it even more than expected. Since I'm new to Steam, do you have any game suggestions? Apologies for any grammar mistakes. English is not my first language. Uh, <coughs> greetings from the Netherlands. Hello. Hello. Uh, never apologize. <coughs> there are so many people here in America with terrible English. You're watching two of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> what is this? Oh, any suggestions for Steam games? It's, it's hard to suggest just regular Steam games because there are so many games on Steam. Yeah. There's literally anything for any genre that you want. Mm-hmm. I would suggest just pick a genre and click on that tab on Steam and go to most popular. Yeah. You'll probably find that. something that you'll, that you'll um, love. Also, uh, Steam is infamous for their sales. Yes. So like, if you could just be patient, you can get like 100 games for $10. Put and they're all like high quality AAA games. Um, I have a video that I put out uh, around Christmas, the first things to do with your Steam Deck, and part of it, watch that video, but part of it is um, put things on your wish list, wait for Steam sales, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that, and also demos. There's a ton of free games to play on your Steam Deck, so look out for all of that stuff. I would say if you you want to get the most out of it, like as soon as possible, check out Valve's first party titles because they're all fantastic yeah you know half-life half-life 2 uh the portal games yeah you know definitely check those out m a m arba minamin says you don't have to do anything else in vampire survivors you just have to control your positioning your character attacks automatically what weapon you used initially when you start a run depends on your character every character has a different starting weapon 
The most important thing in Vampire Survivors besides positioning is your build, your weapon combos alongside your accessories is what determines your run success. See, now that doesn't sound fun, but people in the chat were saying for some reason it's fun. Yeah, that's something that I, that's a game I want to like try again. Like I I definitely know I wasn't understanding it the first go That around. sounds great for a phone. Yeah. You know. Because yeah. if you're just moving, yeah, then why not play that on a phone? Because like like I said the first like time I was playing it like I was moving the character, but like I wasn't hitting anything. They were hitting me. Yeah. So like clearly something was wrong. Yeah. Your build must have been weird, or you, oh, just, or you didn't put anything. I just started the game. So he says, uh, <clears throat> uh, your builds, your weapon combos. Well, start starting a run depend. <clears throat> the weapon you use initially when you start a run depends on your character. Yeah. So so try a different character. All right. I guess was there. What well, happens for more characters? I have, I have to look again. It's great on <clears throat> G Cloud mobile mm. version. Interesting. Uh, anyway, oh now we're in the regular chat. Hyper yes. Senshi says Vampire Survivors has no right being as fun as it is. Yeah, that does it doesn't make any sense why it would be fun. <laughs> Do you think it's viable that a first model of the Nintendo console will be backwards compatible? The chat just went way too fast. Yeah. Um. And second drops it to be cheaper, like the DS did. Oh, they're talking about um, the next a Switch, new, a new model. Um, yeah, because the the DS was backwards compatible with the Game Boy, with the Game Boy Advance, and then the DS I was not. Um, <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Well, I, the problem is I don't know how the next Nintendo console is going to work with backwards compatibility because I think that Nintendo is learning that their business model isn't how things work anymore like i think they know that people are expecting an account system where you can bring your games over to something yeah. else so i don't i mean i'm not ex i'm expecting at least to have games like shovel knight on my fucking next switch you yeah. know like there's no reason why i wouldn't be able to download the indie games yeah you know Bob, Gully Kit released the Hall Effect sticks for the Joy-Con there on Gully Kit's official AliExpress. I literally, I think I saw you say it in the chat before, and I have it in a tab. I'm going to buy them right after this. For like $8 slow shipping on mine, I'm looking at one that's $30. Huh. So, I don't know. Um, or more on Amazon through resellers. Yeah, I don't want to get it through a reseller because I don't trust it. Uh, Edward Bobus says, so Bob, what do you think about Joy-Con Drift may have actually been fixed with a new pair of... Oh yeah, that's the, the gully kit. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to try it. I, I, I tweeted <coughs> at them. They, they didn't get back to me because I, I wasn't even sure if it was legit because it wasn't on their official store. I have owned a total of three Nintendo Switches and none of them ever got Joy-Con Drift. Same except I thought I was feeling it the other day. I was oh, playing uh, Nintendo Switch Sports Golf mm -hmm. which I'm not very happy with. Oh no. I want to hook up the Wii and play Wii Golf okay. because I think that's way better. But it could just be my memory. Right. Um, but uh, it's so sensitive and you, you kind of use the thumbstick to change your, like, I guess, angle. Yeah. And uh, it was slowly drifting a little bit. Oh, no. I have to, like, flick it to reset. Yeah, yeah. It was too sensitive. Uh, anyway, I finally got drifty on my pro controller. A pro controller drift is weird. Yeah, that's that's very that's uncommon. That shouldn't have happened. Uh, K Jack says I never had Joy-Con <laughs> drift, but my launch day switch I sold to my brother apparently got drift. You oh, got drift. I got drift. Yeah, because I only play in portable mode because that's how I roll. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't play Smash Brothers, so I don't have stick drift. Uh, I don't play Smash Brothers very regularly, and I got stick drift. It happens to everybody. It'll happen to you. Will, what is your favorite <clears throat> game of all time? Resident Evil 4. Original. Not this game that's coming out. <laughs> you should never flick it when it's too sensitive. Tisk tisk. All right, I get what you're... That's a penis joke. <laughs> Uh, uh, I have an Animal Crossing Switch. I'm too nervous to use the Joy Cons due to drift concerns, and I think I've gotten drift in one of my Pro controllers. Now we're just this is just the this is the drift is, yeah drift drift havers anonymous right now. I had a Pro controller drift, cleaned it, and it works like new. Yeah, that could be it. So a Pro controller, you often see white residue around yeah. the stick, and that's just because it 
rubs the plastic off of the sides. Maybe just blowing air in it is enough to get rid of the drip. Where did you get that table? This is from Throw House. Yes, custom uh, made. Needless Things is the name of his store. So he made it, and it's very nice because uh, now, now we can go like yes. this, and 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 it's not gonna fall over. Yep. He also made a thing that I'm making a video on uh, tomorrow, uh, Thursday. It'll be out Thursday. Well, if you don't ever use your Joy-Con, it will never fail. But it's like you never had it. That's a good point. Yes. Is Nintendo still doing free repairs for Joy-Con drift? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yes, and it's still very easy to do. Link to his store. Uh, Let's see if I can find it. Uh, I think it's on his Instagram account. I'm going to yeah. Twitter. Uh, I have one of the Binbot controllers, and one of the thumbsticks is drifting, so I want to try to clean it to see if I can fix it. One of the thumbsticks is drifting. Yeah, I, I'm a little skeptical of these third party control, like the, especially like these Chinese third party controllers yeah. and like and, and Hong Kong Chinese controllers. Um, they're often uh, calibrated strangely for the, the 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 thumbsticks, and I'm skeptical how long those thumbsticks will last. Yeah, uh, and that includes stuff like the Binbok, and also the gu- like Gully Kit makes hall sensing thumbsticks, but they're calibrated weird sometimes so yeah i don't know how i feel about those either i mean i i think hall sensing thumbsticks at this point like that's just the latest trend like people that's what are, i think I'm, people are seeing it and they're like they know it's less susceptible to drift yeah so it's a marketing thing yeah i really do think that it's a it's a it, it, it's a weird marketing term right now that i think we w- i think the next nintendo console they'll have a new buzzword yeah and we'll go with that uh otaku sam says every time i wear my wolf den t-shirt i always get asked and complimented on it that's a good point i should talk about this uh this weekend 20 percent off oh this, there you this go shirt and uh the hoodie 20 so everybody go buy them yeah and also the non-tendo shirts will be 20 yeah off. um so go check those now is the time to get those uh Bob, did you see Lenovo was making an Android handheld that got canceled? No, I didn't. Did not see that. Oh, wait. I didn't know it got canceled. Lenovo's making it? I saw a thumbnail on a YouTube video. I didn't click on it, though. Jedi Bean Burchag says, Hey, Wolf, I watch you on YouTube and bought myself a Miu Mini for Christmas and absolutely love it. Wouldn't have even known it existed if it wasn't for you. Thanks for making the content. Thank you, Jedi Bean Burchag, for watching. Uh, all right. That's it. Bye. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on Twitch. Twitch. Yes, Twitch. Yes. Twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us. Because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Yes. Uh, I forgot to look up who's streaming so we can raid somebody. All right. Uh, who do we have here? Nobody ever streams anymore. What's up with that? Oh, AJ. Did Go they see AJ. Did they change the rules on people like YouTube did? Or <laughs> Yeah. Uh, here, go watch AJ. He's playing Pokemon. There you go. Uh, okay. Uh, I will see you Thursday for a new video and also a live stream. How about that? Why can't I fucking get to the stupid? And don't forget, merch 20% off. Yay. Yay. Okay. Thanks for being here. Go say hi to AJ. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.